Hello friends, greetings from Trailer Park Paradise. Award season is finally over. Actually, I don't know if it is. I should probably Google that. But who needs Google? You just have subscribers that are so willing to comment and educate you on everything. That's why I got into this line of work. Free education. College schmollage, am I right? What is on the ground? I think that was a toad that got ran over. Perhaps you remember last year when I ripped off three awards show looks. Well, this year I intend to do the same. For my first act of plagiarization, I'd like to take on a look from the Golden Globes. Can you guess who I'm going to be impersonating? Well, I intended for my current outfit to serve as a hint. What's that? No. I'm not dressed as a hybrid of Pennywise and a singular corn stalk. That was unintentional, but good guess. Now this was supposed to be paying homage on Omar, Omar, to Beyonce's lemonade outfit. Yes, the Golden Globes look that I'll be recreating is Beyonce's. But for the other two looks, I need your help. I'd like to make something from the Grammys and something from the Oscars, which by the time you're watching this, the Oscars will have happened. I'm talking to the future. Hello, what is the future like? Are you happy? Do I have children? Does America still exist? Well, the Oscars are tomorrow, so probably, so probably like, probably not. Stay tuned to find out how I got an enormous scar on my thigh, as well as potentially rabies in my veins. I, I really don't think I have rabies though. Almost definitely not. To figure out how much fabric I would need, I grabbed my iPad and sat in the driver's seat. After minutes of sketching, I found I had a plan, so no more time for sitting, it was time now to stand. That's when I went to Joanne's and asked this lady if I could film her hands. Do you mind if I put your hands on YouTube? I don't mind. So to recap, you're going to need a gold and black fabric, one and three quarters of a yard of each. When you've returned home to your RV, cut out two pizza slice shapes of fabric. I recommend using a fabric you don't care much about, like perhaps one that you found on the patio of a nearby Starbucks. Use your hand to measure the width of your pectoralis major and then make your pizza slice a little wider than that. Now fold your metaphorical pizza slice in half and then draw a slight curve starting at the crust. Pin along that curve and then try the piece on your chest. Or your client's chest. I don't know, maybe you're making this for... Uh, Beyonce, maybe you are from the future and you came back and watched this tutorial to find out how to make the dress that Beyonce wore or is going to wear to the Golden Globes. Trace those pizza slices onto your outer fabric, then lay them on top of each other, pin them, and- Quick break because I just found my nippers and I realized that they don't match my scissors and everything needs to match in here, so I'm gonna do what I did with the rest of the scissors. As I was saying, layer those two pieces on top of each other and sew along the sides, leaving the crust open. Now repeat those steps on the other side, then flip them both inside out and let your iron take a ride. When you've finished that journey, fold them both in half. Should you sew along that curve, you do the math. JK, I'd never make you do math on this channel, whether making a circle skirt, a shirt, or cutting up a flannel. Curve the edge of the panel. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what my deal is. I just keep like breaking out into slow jams. If this is some type of sickness, like a flu, I just hope it's the B strain. Anyway, that night I stopped working to go out to dinner with my mom and Aunt Molly, neither of whom are single ladies, so don't get any ideas, guys. Hello, world! Apparently that dinner wasn't filling enough for me because the next morning I was immediately in the mood to make spaghetti straps. Sorry, that joke will probably make a grand total of like one person laugh, and it's probably my friend Veronica. Switching back over to the narrator voice, to make these spaghetti straps, you're going to sew two long tapeworm-like tubes and then flip them inside out and iron them flat. Now we're going to work on that big thing that hangs around her neck. No, not him. Uh, that thing. You're going to want to fold your fabric in half long ways, creating a tube that is about as wide as an English bulldog and about as long as the height of an emu. Yes, I said emu, because when I say emu, the British become quite displeased with me. And rightfully so, because come to think of it, emu sounds pretty stupid. Speaking of the first two letters of that word, remember back in 2008 when emo was a big style and everybody had the long fitted tees and the choppy hair and the super skinny jeans? Well, lately I'm just kind of feeling FOMO. Like, I missed out on that because I always dressed so simple back then. Back to the dress. If your mom brings you orange juice in the middle of your project, just gently set her aside and then turn your big loop inside out. If she wants to go to McDonald's, that's absolutely fine as long as you make sure you get content along the way. For instance, I found this vehicle. Um, lovely and artistic, but perhaps hazardous. So I wasted a lot of my day at a thrift store that wasn't exactly a thrift store. It was more of a like things still in packages that never sold at other stores store. And I got these little fake butterfly hair clips that can come off of the hair clips and potentially cover a whole bodice of a dress if I get more. So let me know if you think that's a good idea. Time to get back to work. It's up to us to save the globe, the golden globe, to infinity and beyond, say.
Oh my gosh, why are my jokes so bad? Is this what happens when you move into a retirement community? All my other millennial friends who live in retirement trailer parks, please sound off. Have you noticed a change in your personality? Now I bet you were wondering how we were going to get that roughly cobra collar to have some structure. Well, we're using 20 gauge wire and I used a few pieces, twisted them together, and then made a halo. Just kidding, not a halo, just sort of a half halo. And then I infused my big tube with it and said, I'm a cobra way too many times. I'm a cobra. I'm a cobra. I'm a cobra. <laughs> Oh. For now, we're gonna set this little guy aside. Now for the part I've been avoiding. We don't wanna trace our dress form for this. Since this dress is supposed to be fitted, it is crucial that I mark it exactly where my waist and hips are because my hips don't lie. I think that's by Shakira. Dang it. Yeah, it's by Shakira. But you gotta admit, if that were a Beyonce song, that would have been a really well-placed phrase. Now lay on the ground on top of two layers of your fabric and trace your hips. If you accidentally trace them a little bit too big, run over to 7-Eleven and get three Slurpees every day for a month, and then you'll see some progress. Your hips will be a little bigger and you'll fit into your skirt. And now, as long as you chose a stretchy fabric, all you have to do is sew up the edges. You don't even have to add a closure. I highly recommend this dress for like a prom or something if you're a beginner. Because excluding the giant shoulder ruffles, this is probably the easiest thing I've ever made. And I'm still talking about the dress, by the way. Uh, this footage of me making dinner is only to show you what it's like cooking in an RV. It's quite just like normal, actually, except I forgot to pack many cooking supplies with me, like a ladle, so I occasionally have to improvise. That was hot, by the way. But I am basically drunk in love with shrimp alfredo, and sometimes you just have to put your love on top. I did some hand sewing to make my ruffles lay in the exact formation that I wanted them to, and whilst doing that, I watched a charming documentary about the 1918 influenza outbreak break. Next is a step that I have to stress. You're gonna take your pizza slices and shove them in your dress. Okay, first rough- dang it. <coughs> the first rough try on. It doesn't look even half of 1% as good on me as it did on her. Not sure why. Maybe I need to poof or heighten. Well, now I look like a lion. Well, she was in the Lion King, so- <coughs> Do you think that's why she went for this? Because the lion- because like a lion? that obvious? I don't know. Should have researched. That's good. For like a Met Gala? No? Okay, let's try to diagnose the problem. Why does this not look as good as that? Got it. It's the blonde hair. Okay, but in reality, now that I'm finished with the dress and I'm comparing photos myself and her side by side, I realize the problem is that I didn't get born as Beyonce. Good morning. Last night I had a dream that my dad came and he said, look outside. And I looked and both my chickens were there. And I said, dad, no, this is a dream. Don't get my hopes up. He said, it's not a dream. Touch them. And I reached down and I touched them and they were my chickens. I was so happy. And then I woke up. I'd like to interject that I've dreamt of my chickens approximately 50% of all the nights that I've been in Florida. I miss them so much that I've gone to great lengths to beckon other animals into pethood. And these efforts have proven themselves fruitful, for I have attracted a swarm of Florida chickens. Though they aren't nearly as kind as my chickens, and they're probably more closely related to a stork than a chicken, it's okay because I also have a Florida cat to fill that void. Isn't she cute? Anyway, back to you, Makara. But now I'm happy because it's time to pick up my best buddy Josh from the airport. Where's my best buddy? There he is! Hey. Then we met up with my friend Veronica in a city called Ebor that was everything a city should be. There were chickens everywhere. I mean everywhere. And they were protected by the city. Can you make that sound again? <laughs> Thanks. It's also supposedly the cigar capital of something or other. So this is where the world's fog comes from. So clearly, I thought I won the award for having the most fascinating day, but then I checked my dad's Instagram story and saw this. Look who snuck in my car. Yes. Hi, Squirrely. Come on out. Just never leave your car door open for too long around here. Right, Squirrely? But unbeknownst to me, and quite unfortunately, my day was about to become exponentially more fascinating. See, that evening I was on a jog, my off-brand AirPods blasting music from the Muppets movie soundtrack, when suddenly I felt a strange pouncing sensation encompass the entirety of my- all of me, and I realized, hold up, I'm being attacked by a stray dog. The following is a dramatized reenactment, with mom playing the part of Makara and Makara playing the part of stray dog. Don't know what it was, there was no collar, it was pretty heavy, maybe like a Labrador, and it would pounce on me and then run a circle, come back to me, and pounce on me again, and the second time it did, it scraped my thigh up pretty good, and then when he ran a circle again, I ran to a nearby jungle gym, which is what I'm on in this picture right here. Then I called my mom and asked her to drive to the playground and pick me up, and while I was waiting for her, the stray dog ran up and attacked another dog. This is very dramatic. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry this footage is garbage. I should have packed my ring light with me, but silly me, I just didn't plan for a dog attack. Anyway, those headlights you see here in the distance are my mom's. I was about to be saved. It's 
matter? Oh, she's a dog. This is what it looked like immediately after, and I didn't have any medical supplies to clean it out with, but it's okay, this is what it looks like now. Clearly no rabies or coronavirus infected in it. Still though, the event was shocking enough to give me a new lease on life, to realize I need to finish what I start. Hey, do you want to hear a lie? I spent the whole next day working on my dress. But first I had to get more inspiration to finish the Golden Globes dress by visiting a globe. You know, the really big one at Universal Studios. I know that's a stretch, but if I make it part of this video, I can write it off for taxes. Just kidding, I literally do not know how to write things off for taxes. I don't know. I don't know anything about taxes. But I really did spend the whole day at Universal Studios instead of working on my dress. This morning is the happiest day ever because I'm just reading comments people have left under my brother Micah's video. People finally realize he's a genius, so that's exciting. So I watched Harry Potter for the first time last night, and all I can say so far is Ginger Ron Stoppable and Hernia granola whatever her name is they would be a cute couple harry potter so far is just kind of like the happier version of bella swan just kind of there rather emotionless i hope you enjoyed that movie review now for my review of universal studios or as the blunt would call it edgy Disney World. One of the first things you might notice is that unlike Disney World where everyone scrambles to meet the costumed characters, everyone at Universal sort of tries to avoid them. You also might notice that on any given day it's significantly less crowded than Disney World, providing ample space to dance. That's not to say passers-by won't pass by or film you while you dance, perhaps, but still at least there's room to breathe. <laughs> Also well at Universal, I saw a plethora of inspiration for my RV exterior, such as a mystery-solving RV, Simpsons RV, time-traveling RV. And now the edgy thing about Universal, aside from the hip-shaking of stilted individuals, I diagnosed this theme park with severe hauntedness. I mean, everything from the architecture to the people standing dormantly in the streets staring at this big dragon, like they were under its spell, and they managed to make all their animatronics look just like my dearly departed grandfather, somehow quickly before I showed up. Oh, and let's not forget the self-knitting needle making clothes with no help from humans, you know, like it's laughing in my face telling me I'm obsolete. Oh, and the self-stirring cauldron? I kind of want one. I wonder if it's cheaper than a KitchenAid mixer. Anyway, the scariness did not stop with Harry Potter World. I found that every square inch of this place was littered with some frightening attraction, from stilted psychos to- Okay, let me show you the most disturbing thing I found the whole time I was there. There was even something supernatural happening with the tables at the Starbucks. You know how wood always has those characteristics, those markings left by bugs over years? Well, the tables here had some pretty spooky ones. I mean, the fact that they were able to find a piece of wood that a caterpillar had eaten not one but two pentagrams into. The next one I found was definitely not a caterpillar though. I think it was done by maybe a millipede, possibly termites. So we hightailed it out of there, but the mysterious activity did not end when we left Universal. No, on the way home we passed something strange. I'm not sure if it was a man on his roof in a clown mask or a mannequin on a roof in a clown mask, but either way, it's highly sus, am I right? But luckily soon I was back home in my safe little neighborhood. Ugh, sorry for the rabbit hole. You guys were probably hoping for more DIY action. Well, here's this. My kitchen floor was really boring, so I had to fix that problem in order to have an environment in which I could properly make a dress. Now believe me, at this point I wanted to finish my dress, but I had to watch the Oscars. My friend Stephanie and I always make ballads, so we had a highly competitive Skype date. I have accurately predicted 7 out of 7 of the winning categories so far. By the end of the night, I had accurately predicted 18 out of 24 categories, which isn't all that great, but it's my personal best, so I was happy. Well, happy-ish. Unfortunately, one of the things that I accurately predicted was my worst nightmare, and that was Little Women winning best costumes. Little Women! Don't get me wrong, I loved the movie, but the costumes just did not deserve to win. I could make a whole video on why, but I don't make rant videos, so I never will. I understand the creative decision of making Jo wear unorthodox things because she's always like, if I were a boy and stuff, but everybody else is just- No, oh, back to Beyonce. I'm sorry, I just have too much I want to share. Now the final pieces were ready to attach, so I looked in the mirror and an idea was hatched. All I knew was that I needed the shoulders to be fat, so I took off the dress and on the couch I sat. And then I did some freestyle hand sewing, attaching the big puffy shoulder noodle to the edges of the pizza slice as well as the front of the spaghetti straps. Okay, it sounds like I'm obsessed with Italian cuisine, but I just don't know what else to call these things. Their titles are irreplaceable. The dress is done! So right now I should probably put this on and get some grand reveal shots while it's still daylight outside, and then I can spend the evening editing and get this video up tomorrow. That's what I should do. So. I'm gonna play Fortnite now. 
Now, I love Fortnite, but don't misunderstand me. I am not skilled at Fortnite. Winning Fortnite is the best thing I never had. I usually just shoot for second place. I typically play it the same way I play dodgeball and would play the Hunger Games, just hiding until the end. This particular game, though, I eliminated three other opponents, but then my mom walked in and had like a miniature nervous breakdown that her daughter was into killing. So and... that threw me off a little bit and I was distracted and someone else eliminated me. <laughs> Dead. After my tragic passing, I somberly put on my dress and then touched up my makeup. I had to hurry because we were running out of daylight and there was somewhere my mom wanted to take me for the grand reveal. Why did I put off getting ready for so long? I don't know. Maybe because pretty hurts. Or maybe because I'm a procrastinator. But probably not. I shouldn't be jumping to conclusions. Now for the makeup, obviously I did not even bother trying to make myself look like Beyonce because that is impossible, so I just tried to be a slightly prettier version of me. I promised my mom I would let her choose my destinations for grand reveals and she did not disappoint. Wonder what type of buffets they eat in Hollywood to stay in such great shape? Buffets like these. Yum. Say something encouraging. You look gorgeous. I meant about my intelligence. Oh. That is a wrap. Now to make something from the Grammys. <laughs>